Hi everybody, today we are going to talk about The Vegetarian. Now, I got this book um, just off, offhand when I was in Oakland, you know, visiting the International Book Fair. And I was at a bookstore and I was talking to this old woman and I suggested to her um, The Streets of Crocodile. And when I asked for a suggestion, she gave me this one. And I was like, eh, it on the cover, like whatever. I'm um, not a vegetarian at all. I thought it was going to be some, you know, just kind of um, mainstream kind of book. But when I read it, it's actually a very good book and I was very impressed with it. It took me by surprise. Now, I'm going to go over the plot of the, of the book, but it's, this is going to be a spoiler discussion and I'll state when the spoiler happens. Now, there's four main characters you have to worry about. I don't remember all their names and I'm going to mispronounce them anyway. So, the main one is about, um, I believe it's Mr. Chong's family, where it's um, a husband and a wife. And the husband is just kind of like a subpar dude just getting through life, always average at everything not really accomplishing much while the wife is somebody who a little odd but very agreeable it doesn't really act out much the only weird thing about it is that she doesn't like to wear a bra and there it's very much of a marriage of complacency it reminds me a lot of um the short story in um dubliner's little chandler or little cloud where he just realizes like hey i'm not doing what i want in life and i'm just complacent i'm just here and that is very this much this marriage. It's, it's not a passionate marriage by any means. And, but then you have the other family, which is um, the main character's sister. So the two sisters are related. And she is the breadwinner of the family. She's much prettier than her sister. And she's married to an artist who is um, kind of a bum, unfortunately. But not so much a bum as an artist. A bum, but like he hasn't produced any proper art in a while. And he, so the wife pays most of the bills and he barely takes care of his kids. He's always kind of out there, but his life is kind of failing also. But what the story really kicks in is that the, the first main character, she just stops eating meat one day. She has, starts having these weird, vivid, almost kind of violent in a sense dreams about meat. And she stops eating it, starts throwing it away. And it turns the whole family into turmoil. And there are two culminates to scenes where they try to force her to eat meat and I think a large part of this also and a little bit what I'm missing is that it's probably more it's based on um the Korean societal structure um and if I had a gleam from it like with any sort like with me uh, Mexican American or Mexican culture is that the women are mainly supposed to be in the background they're supposed to kind of cater to the demands of the men and if and that's kind of true in most traditional families as well so if that's what they're getting at it's I, th I think that's a major aspect also, but it's kind of lost to me because I'm not an expert. I think this is the first Korean book I've actually read. Now, to get to the main point and the main theory that I want to get to in this book, um, spoilers, in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, she dies. <laughs> she withers away. She goes to a mental hospital. She stops eating. She stops responding to stuff, to stimuli. And in some regard, and she, her husband divorces her, so in some regard, she's free of her situation and predicament but to thrown into a worse predicament. That's why, after thinking about it, I would put this in um, the transgressive category, but with a huge caveat. Now, with transgressive literature, um, the easiest starting stuff being like Chuck Palahniuk, um, but then you get a lot of that in like uh, better examples in like French literature, like with the Torture Garden, or you know, great examples of Marquis de Sade, which will come up later, is that they go against the norm and they do something that's seen so horribly to the status quo, but it's almost like a sense of enlightenment for them. It's a sense of release. It's a sense that they can finally achieve happiness because with being within the status quo, they are not happy, which you very see in this book where she's just so passive in life and she's just not doing anything with her life. She's just more existing than actually living. And so just breaking out of that status quo by claiming one thing to herself and not eating meat. But the main difference, I would say, with well, this deviates from transgressive literature is that while she is transgressing, it doesn't help her. It kills her. And so going, going to her um, weird desires that she's been having, it's totally destructive. Now, I wouldn't say that the author is by any means saying that she should have stuck with the old system because the way she portrays it in this book with like her, how over bearing and domineering her father is to her and all her family members are just trying to really control her the author is no means by saying the old system is good i think what the author is saying is that um it's almost like the idea of relativity where there's no 
perfect system. Everything will have flaws. Um, the human experience will codify everything and we'll just always have problems with whatever system who we get into. And I say that because if you compare it to other stuff like, like again, the Mark Haley said, where he's very a big proponent of villainy and not giving into the whims of society and going by what is dictated by your own nature. And he has a saying like, you know, if we, if we get villain, if we, if we do commit villainy, if we get what we want because if we stay with the status quo, we don't get what we want. So, but if we get caught, then we, all we have is a noose. So then we die. So then we don't have to worry about anything. And this is, and so with that, one can also say that, you know, maybe it's like, it's saying like, oh, it's better to die for what you love than um, live for what you, then it's better to die for what you love than like continue on the way of living that you currently are now. But again, I don't feel like that's the way that's going because the character really loses herself. She really gets hurt. And unlike with Marka De Say, she doesn't gain anything. Um, one could say she gains a sense of independence, but not really because she's still in the mode of like, almost like existing more than actually living. Because even in that sense, she, she just kind of goes with people's whims. Like there's one scene where she has sex with her brother-in-law and you know, it's contrasted with an early scene where her husband rapes her. And when the husband rapes her, it, it really it, it affects her, but then she kind of just goes to her um, point of just existing. And when the brother has sex with her, there's no sexual liberation. There's no enjoyment in it. So it's like the same reaction almost where she just goes about her day still. So there was nothing really gained from the character uh, aside from getting away from her family. If anything, it, it just kills her. Now, I, I go with that point that the author's not trying to go with a die for what you want rather than live with what you don't want philosophy because contrasted with the other family um you see the same parallel where the the wife is live is not happy with her marriage the sister is not happy with her marriage she's working she's the breadwinner she wishes her husband you can tell her she wishes her husband to step it up more she gets aggravated where he doesn't he can't even pick up his kid doesn't pay attention to him and the husband on the other side is so obsessed with this image of a flower on bodies and wants to get that piece of art that he just forgoes almost everything and is the and is a big cause of why his marriage is failing so you have that same parallel where the sister staying within the norm the societal norms and staying and being a good person um is not giving in her happiness but the husband going to his desires and what he wants also doesn't bring him happiness but then when he does get his one when he does is able to paint because he does lust after the main character also when he's able to do an art project and paint on her and you know if he eventually has sex with her it ruins his marriage and he gets they get divorced and he, they kick him out of the house so it's like he went for what his natural inclinations were and it still didn't suit him there were still problems so a, a big thing of the book is just saying like um a, a really different from george bathier but transgression doesn't necessarily help you. Transgression can still harm you. However, staying within social norms can be just as devastating. Um, it's like a between a rock and a hard place. And it, again, I, that's why in some ways I'd kind of put a, a little bit of the postmodernist ideology in this book where there is no perfect system. There is no utopia and each system it's gonna have its flaws. So where really is the right and wrong in the systems if you're gonna be unhappy either way or the effects of the systems or what your desires are are gonna press upon you and limit you to a large degree also. So those are my thoughts about The Vegetarian. I know she has a, another book, uh, it's not all the small things. It is, it has a Blink-182 song. It is Human Acts. I don't know where that other name came from, but I'll probably review that in the future. It was really well written. Um, I'd recommend it absolutely, and it's a pretty short book, um, but it has just a great writing style as well. So, um, have you read The Vegetarian? I know a lot of other YouTubers have viewed it. Um, leave a comment down below, see if you agree with what I'm saying, or if you think that um, the, the, the main character did have something to gain from not eating meat and from going away from her family. But yeah, leave a comment down below, like the video, and I'll catch you.